I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. This is the second of two requests for Grade B. They do so much for that. If anyone wants to request any type of review, re-review, topic, reaction, any type of video, you just send the request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for 10 Cloverfield Lane, which I never saw and I never wanted to see because I knew this would not be for me. And it kind of was proven right. Now, I know this is a heavily praised film. If you like it, that's cool. I will say the acting's not the problem. The main three actors, Mary, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, was not bad. She did her job. John Goodman, easily the best scene of this film. The other guy, I think is, is John Gallagher Jr. I can't remember his name. He's not bad. I don't mind the setup of being in this bunker and wondering is there something out there, is there not? John Gerbman says there's this, been this contamination. Mary Elizabeth once said doesn't know whether to trust John Gerbman or not. <coughs> Damn, sorry. Went too far, hit the fucking wall. Sorry about that. Oh, what the fuck was that? I knew this would not be for me because number one, the title, 10 Cloverfield Lane. This has nothing to do with Cloverfield. Oh, I'm sure if I did a fucking microscope and then try to dot the I's and cross the T's and then try to look under, under, inner, outer, maybe find a little thing here, little thing there. But I'm like, no, fuck that. J.J. Abrams, who produced this, fuck that shit. This has nothing to do with fucking Cloverfield. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have to look through a fucking mus microscope to find little teeny tiny things that maybe connects the two. Even when you get to the ending, it's like, well, I don't know if this ending really connects the Cloverfield either, because this is a completely different tr monster. And anyway, I'll get to that. I like Cloverfield. I like the original Cloverfield quite a bit. I saw it in the theater when it came out. I enjoyed it on home video, on DVD, I think to uh, have the Blu-ray. Cloverfield I thought it was fun, that was entertaining, that was an interesting way of doing found footage of having a big monster movie as part of it. I heard the rumor, uh, well, J.J. Abrams wanted to do more of a sequel to Cloverfield, but because films like Godzilla and Pacific Rim, oh great, because two shitty films come out that I don't give a fuck about. And if you like them, that's cool, but I don't. Oh, that doesn't mean I can get a secret Cloverfield? Fuck that. So, so what? You, you have your own fucking monster, your own fucking world. That, I mean, that doesn't stop fucking comic book films. It's comic book film because there's too many <laughs> said no one in this day and age. 
Oh, we can have 18 fucking comic book movies, but we can't have a third monster movie. At least at the time with Clover, with the uh, Godzilla and Pacific Rim. I'm sorry, I, I guess that's against some fucking movie law that I didn't know about. So instead, I'm like, okay, this is a sequel to Chlorophyll, but most part, this might be a sequel to fucking, I don't know, Pacific Heights, for I fucking know. Or something, I mean, it might as well be. Like a weird sequel to Pacific Heights, I mean. The setup is Mary Elizabeth Winstead is driving away from her fiance. She gets in her car crash. She wakes up. She has a laid brace. There's John Goodman tr saying that he's trying to keep you alive, keep her alive. Gives her a tour of this bunker. There's another guy named Emmett. And from the get go, you know something's up with John Goodman with the way he acts and the way he's all out of it. So people are like, oh, you don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. It seems pretty fucking prevalent with how weird he is with they're at a table and the guy, the other guy is trying to have some humor and John Goodman slams like, your humor is not funny. Please shut up and let us eat in peace. But he's easily, a blind man can see something's up with John Goodman's character. And so Mary Elizabeth once that hits him with a bottle, tries to escape. There's a woman outside with legions on. So Mary Elizabeth doesn't open it. Goes back inside. And that's really a montage of to the song, I Think We're Alone Now, which was in the trailer. And they're playing puzzles, watching VHS tapes, play board games, things of that nature. Now... When I viewed this, I knew it was not be a fast-paced movie. I knew it was going to be a slow build of a film. But my problem is, what does it really build up to? That's a question I have for people who enjoy the film. What does it build up to? Yes, it has this mystery. Yes, it's supposed to have this intrigue. But it builds up to something where no answers are fucking given. Like with uh, John Goodman's character. Spoiler alert. For some reason, John Drummond has Mary Elizabeth Winstead go into this vent, because she's so skinny, to fix this air filtration thing. Now, when she gets there, there's a big fucking ladder that goes up to what looks like another cell, and then she looks in, and there's a thing that says, help. And then she finds stuff like an earring there, and then you put two and two together with the other guy Emmett and say, wait a minute, there's this girl that disappeared two years ago that had the same shirt you're wearing and has the same earrings. So I don't see any other explanation. That means John Goodman took this girl two years ago, put her in there. Because he literally said, well, this picture is my daughter. This shirt was my daughter's. And no, it's this girl that was hitting two years ago. So obviously this guy is crazy. He abducted this girl two years ago. So when people, when I read comments going, by the end, you still don't know if John Goodman is innocent. What more do you need to say that John Goodman, of course he's guilty. What other explanation is there? Even though this isn't my daughter, I'm going to tell you this is my daughter. Even though I said this is my daughter's shirt, no, this is actually someone else's shirt. I have some fucking thing that someone etched help in. And also, why would John Goodman send... He obviously would know the girl was up there. We don't see the body, but we can assume. He took care of it, it's still up there, whatever. Why didn't John Goodman fix the air filtration himself? He, this guy who is so cautious about everything else. He's so cautious about don't touch this. Don't touch each other. Don't do this. Hmm. I'm going to take the shower curtain because this guy said maybe there's some even a slint of contamination. Maybe I'll throw that away. He's so cautious about this, but he's going to send this Mary Elizabeth Winstead to this air filtration where there's two feet there's a goddamn ladder to a fucking cell that you kept someone and there's all this other shit including the earrings and stuff there 
Well, John Goodman couldn't fit in because the vent is too slim. How the fuck do you think John Goodman got there in the first place? How do you think he got there in the first place? How do you think this guy who is so adamant on building all this, he would have to get there sooner or later? Which means I dare and fucking to you, there's another way to get into that place. I dare and fucking to you. How did he get there in the first place? How did everything get built in the first place? How did John Grimman get that girl who wrote help? How did that get there in the first place? By fucking osmosis? Did, did he teleport her there like he's fucking Night Watcher? Which means there is a way for, and again, if Mary Elizabeth wasn't there, then uh, what, the air filtration just wouldn't work? No, I think this guy would have some kind of plan with concern how adamant he was on every fucking thing else. So then, yeah, I'm going to tell you to go to this place that has all this red flags about me, including this big fucking ladder and a big fucking tank that I had a prisoner in. Worst abductor ever. <laughs> I just, that's where John Grimm's character is really stupid about that. So, that's what I'm like, where is this all leading up to? It just leads up to John Grimm and you get a feeling you can't trust him. We're right about that. To me, it'd be more interesting if John Grimm was a good guy. That he was the good guy and he was actually telling the 100% truth and he was right about everything. Because he finally, he wasn't even right about the contamination. It was a goddamn alien that sometimes would spread green shit, but that's it. So if you have your first thought that John Goodman is a psycho nut, you're right. So there was no big reveal or big twist or big consummation of that plot line so maybe go what, what was the fucking point other than i like john Grimm's performance he's intense he does a really good job that's the one of the only things that kept me going is i like john Grimm as an actor he gives a good performance the movie is not i don't think it's exciting it's that scary i don't think it was that thrilling people say it's so suspenseful I disagree because you know the girl ain't going to die you know the guy's going to die because who the fuck is he he's the third wheel you know it's going to be Mary Elizabeth Winston versus John Goodman did anyone doubt that I mean maybe I'm alone I mean it's very women rule boys rule so the woman's going to be She-Ra she's going to be the hero to me that's predictable how many, just think about it, how many times is it the reverse? How many times in this type of film could you ever really see, say, John Goodman is the good guy, he's doing the right thing, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, in fact, she's a crazy nut? Could you ever view that happening? No. Because it rarely ever fucking happens in a movie where that kind of thing happens. Unless you set up from the beginning like a misery or fatal attraction that type of thing but i mean for like your twist with the way it's set up here to me it was fairly predictable what it was going and then by the end she escapes john Grumman gets burned by this chemical she escapes she's in the suit she made by this point, the other guy, Emma, has been shot by John Goodman. She sees birds. She takes off the suit. Then she sees what she thinks is a helicopter, but it's an alien spaceship. And you knew something like that would happen. Because other, because if nothing sci-fi, if nothing supernatural, or I can't even say supernatural, but if nothing sci-fi happened, then you really would have a reason to go, why the fuck is this a sequel to Cloverfield? If this is a sequel to Cloverfield, that means something sci-fi has to be a part of it. Something sci-fi. That'd be like me going and taking uh, Bad Boys and calling it a sequel to Men in Black. 
Like Bad Boys for Life. Wow, that's a weird sequel to Men in Black. Or I took uh, Fast and Furious and said, well, this is a prequel to Riddick. Because <laughs> Vin, you know, although Fast and Furious already did more and more sci-fi, now that I think about it, because I hear they're going to go into space one day. But that's what I mean, like, people said it's so suspenseful. I just didn't see it that way. You know, John Goodman, he has so many warning signs that he's not someone to be trusted, that he has these how he gets so mad at the table that's not normal you go well what about what's going on i mean no there's something to it it made me think of tim robbins and the war of the worlds remake and that's what this kind of is that section in the war of the worlds remake when tom cruise and dakota fanning are with the crazy tim robbins you took that segment and you made an entire movie out of it that's what this film feels like and you know what that wasn't my favorite segment of War of the Worlds remake. I liked that film. That wasn't really my favorite segment. There's other parts I liked. You even have a spaceship that lets this gas out. Although really in War of the Worlds it was this blood that was kind of, it sucked up blood and it cascades over the land so everything looks red, which looked pretty cool. <laughs> While here it's green and it's more toxic gas. Must be a complete fart from the aliens well, that's what I mean it just and the ending feels like a different movie that's the thing it's so it's so going more in this abduction psychological thriller and then when oh shit by the way we're sci-fi films so I have a spaceship have this fucking alien with big fucking mouth she throws a Molotov cocktail in the mouth blows it up crashes the ship and then she's driving and then I'm gonna be a hero now I'm gonna go for the fight and she goes towards the fight instead of running away because that's her arc just one like one fucking piece of dialogue exchange about how she always runs away from stuff so that's with her that's all you have with her character she got crashed I always run away from stuff now by the end she's gonna run towards the stuff and not the stuff with Larry Cohen the so I'm watching I'm going the acting's not the problem the three leads are not the problem John Grimm is the best thing about this maybe because it's been years since this film's come out so when people talk about it, they'll say one thing or a different thing so I wasn't in the dark on it compared to other people but even when I saw the trailer I'm like okay this is a the thing I liked about the trailer was the music <coughs> the slow down version of I think we're alone now uh, the whole thing with the bunker this seems like a Twilight Zone episode that's way too long that maybe if it was 40, 45 minutes, it would not overstay its welcome. At the end of the day, not much fucking happened. The mysteries wasn't that mysterious to me. It pisses me off that this is labeled a sequel to Cloverfield when it really has nothing to fucking do with Cloverfield. Even the monster at the end is nothing like the Cloverfield monster. And I don't give a fuck about the Cloverfield paradox, which I read up about. It has oh, some random shot of the Cloverfield monster and it's trying to explain, but then it gets confusing. You get discombobulated because it does a shitty job explaining stuff. And it's a horrible fucking film not really that interested i don't know why you couldn't just make another fucking yes i did it you want to be different in this case to me it was the bad call i would rather have seen a sequel to cloverfield done in the same style sue me being a fan of cloverfield maybe have some characters that don't die at the end that would be you want to do some twists on that or instead of found footage, have it literally be from someone's eyes, like Hardcore Henry. Like, why not that? Why not do a giant monster movie in the style of Hardcore Henry, where it's not footage, but from a person's eyeballs? 
like Hardcore Henry. You could do that. And still be a secret or tour field. Same POV, but different reason. So it's not the exact same. So it's a little bit different, but there's some familiarity. And it doesn't have to be a remake of Chlorofield. There's still parts of the plot you could go in different directions. Maybe Chlorofield has other forms. Maybe after a certain time period, it goes to different forms. Or something. I mean, I don't know. You could play around with that. Here, it's like, what the fuck does this have to do with the first one? Someone goes, well, if you watch the first Chlorofield, this is one shot where you see this thing fall down. I'm like, well, no, 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 no. I thought that was the Chlorophyll monster itself because that was a flashback to the couple at a terrace, like a amusement park. So I thought that the background and it's like a flashback or the footage and you see like this thing. I thought that was, oh, well, that's a prequel to when the Chlorophyll monster. Well, uh, no, what you're saying is not in the movies. I shouldn't have to read some other fucking books or read on fucking line to know what the fuck is going on in the movie. The movie doesn't explain it. The first or the second movie doesn't explain it. For honest, the third movie either doesn't explain it or does a shit job of it. I can't remember which. The whole with John Goodman, he abducted an innocent girl. Where's this... Well, I don't know if he was guilty or innocent. What else is there? Why would he have this girl's shirt and this girl's earrings, this random fucking girl? And Mary Elizabeth has this thing that says, help. And John Goodman keeps saying it's his daughter, even though it's not. And gets pissed off so easily and randomly. That all screams villain to me. And so that whole mystery is really not a mystery. So like, what story am I witnessing here? It's a nice showcase of what John Goodman can do acting wise. It's a decent showcase that Mary Elizabeth Winstead can work as a lead. Because I think she does better here than say the theme prequel. Okay, it's not as bad as the theme prequel. It's, even though the ending, honestly that ending could fit in the theme prequel. <laughs> It really could, like with the fucking CGI and even the look of the alien, almost looked like the alien at the end of the theme prequel, when it was chasing after her and shit, and that spaceship. And that's another thing that turned me off, like the end of this movie could fit in the theme prequel. Like she got back and then this happened and it was alive, we got in a spaceship, chase after her and then she did the Molotov cut, anyway. If you like it, good on ya. The score, I don't remember fucking thing on the score. Direction, nothing egregious I can remember. I just, I wasn't a fan of this film. If you are cool, we agree to disagree. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.